everybody, and welcome to the only YouTube podcast that has over 10,000 YouTube subscribers. Biggs, Ooh. we did it! Oh, the Monkey and Big Show. Biggs, did you ever think? Did you ever think back in the day? What, eight years ago now, we're sitting there, we're recording Bugs Bunny Let's Plays <laughs> in your townhouse on the bad side of the south side of Des Moines. Recording Let's Plays, getting three views a video. Two of the views is from me. <laughs> one of them's from you uploading the video. <laughs> hey, you... we got like at least one from Cobb, right? No, you think oh. Cobb, Cobb doesn't watch my shit now. <laughs> He has no but fucking idea. You're the one that said he does watch it. I don't think he does. I I, I had to send him the. I just posted those those uh, little short f horror films about Cobb being attacked by my brother, and I had to send it to him for him to see it. A video, <laughs> a thumbnail with his face in it. He he had to have it sent to him to notice it. <laughs> oh well. But my point is, Biggs, we passed ten thousand subs. Did you ever think the Monkey and Big Show? would hit the five digit figure folks no i five digits back in the when day. you ask a girl for her phone number that's how many she usually gives you five digits continue oh. <laughs> i was just gonna say like back in the day i always thought it was just gonna be some fun side thing we did uh and you were like okay first of all not fun <laughs> <laughs> that was my first mistake <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean I don't know, playing games was fun, just some of the games mm. we played I think was like uh, questionable. I, I think I uh, think we came to that same conclusion on this very channel about two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we gotta play like Bully again. That was really fun to play through. I don't think there was really a down episode on that. Yeah, well, enough about uh, talking about the past, folks. We gotta talk about the future, and the future is the voicemail segment. Biggs, <laughs> you said you've been really, you really wanted the voicemail segment to shine this week, so you came up with a theme song that you're going to perform live, and you'll do it for every voicemail segment we ever do. So please go ahead. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah, it's a really good one. Are you gonna take a sip of water? Da 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 da. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's brand new. I thought about it last night. Yeah, the price is big, so we should have a podcast called that. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be a great episode. Uh, let's get these headphones on and listen to some voicemails. We got some interesting ones this week. As you may recall, last time a lot of the voicemails were so autistic and horrible that the segment was more about uh, shaming our own fans than responding to their messages. <laughs> but I think we got some actual good ones today. And here's one that goes deep, deep, deep into the monkey lore about a character that I ha I, I've been aware of for basically a decade now. Let's take a listen to Robert. Hey, Mumkey. Hey, Biggs. This is Robert. I'm a friend of Biggs from Snapchat. We talk on occasion. He calls me handsome, tells me how good of a singer I am. It's absolutely lovely. Fucking oh, treat. Wow. Is I that true? I you guys yeah. the story of my relationship me with Robert, classic Monkey buds. Jones recurring character, Mr. Brad Dassey. So, Brad Dassey, Biggs, do you know who Brad Dassey is? Yeah, he's the... Well, the main thing I remember him from is you made like a fan edition uh, music video for I'm Coming Home. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the main thing I remember him from. And also like he was DJing and he gave you a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at like a kid's birthday party. Mm -hmm. I, I recommended a song that he was DJing at, at <clears throat> some party in Wisconsin. Like I'm not even there. Yeah. But uh, Brad Dassey, in my mind, is... Uh, it, is a little bit like Reactor, where it's this this weird, funny internet personality I found who happens to have a much more famous brother, but I discovered this person w with no knowledge of their brother whatsoever. Of course, Reactor has uh, Tim Pool. When I became friends with Reactor and watched his stuff, I had no idea who Tim Pool was. Still kind of, I still kind of don't know who he is. He just like reads articles on the internet. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's like uh, some sort of journalist. I don't know. Pretty famous. It's but, a pretty funny uh, mashup then with the way Reactor does content. Oh uh, well, <laughs> if you think that's funny? You should see what they're up to right now, buddy. That's a uh, that could be a whole fucking podcast of its own. That shit is fucked. Uh oh. It, we got some Cain and Abel shit going on with Reactor and his brother. Really? Like they started like, or like, either Reactor started a company, or him and Tim started a company together. Uh, I, I don't know the details, obviously, but long story short, right now, Tim is operating the company, 
and they kicked Reactor out of the company he started, and Reactor is suing his own brother for, like, millions of dollars. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. I, I never know when, like, his tweets are real or just him messing around, so when well, I saw something <laughs> about that, I just thought he was joking. Yeah, that's the problem, is that when when you have that um, reputation and, like, that's sort of your shtick, when you're actually trying to be serious about an actual uh, serious topic, people tend to not believe you, and it's kind of sad. It doesn't help that his YouTube uh, or that his um, his Twitter description says 880,000 YouTube subs right there. And then you scroll down and the pinned tweet is like, my brother I'm, is, needs to be sued. It's like, well, I don't know if I, <laughs> if I would juxtapose the truth or the lie so closely. Yeah. <laughs> kind of uh. hard for people to buy it, I guess. But I'm I'm 99% sure that Chris Poole, you know, Reactor's real name, is not lying because he is – published all of this as Chris Poole and not as Reactor. Yeah. So, anyway, but Brad Dassey, Brad Dassey's famous brother, is one of the guys from uh, Making a Murderer who was who was in prison for the murder on that show. Uh, Brendan Dassey, I think is his name. Yeah. That's Brad's actual fucking brother. I had, I've, I've still never seen Making a Murderer. Neither have I. No I interest at all. I don't give a shit. But I, I think it's funny that twice now I, I've become friends with a weirdo on the internet who has a famous brother. Uh, but anyway, uh, Brad Dassey, he's a musician. Uh, I've interacted with his music a lot over the years. Uh, I became friends with him back when I was like in fucking high school. This weird man who's has two kids. <laughs> But uh, I brought him back with his song, I'm Coming Home. I used to play it at the end of all my Twitch streams and other places. And now, evidently, uh, Robert's voicemail, he has an interaction with Brad Dassey as well. I want to tell you guys the story of my relationship with classic Monkey Jones recurring character, Mr. Brad Dassey. So, one day, after many listens to my favorite song of all time, I'm Coming Home by Brad Dassey. Good song. Monkey goes ahead and, and posts his Snapchat link uh, <laughs> or retweets it or something like that on Twitter. Yeah, I didn't so, post you know, it. For shits and giggles, I friend him and then me and my roommates uh, do a cover of I'm Coming Home and send it to him, telling him <laughs> that we're fellow Christ warriors and <laughs> fucking institution. I, I forgot to mention uh, Brad Dassey is extremely religious and makes rap songs about how much he loves God. <laughs> and he's like this white guy. <laughs> it's really funny is what I believe I called him. And ever since then, at least once a week, or maybe even twice, he Snapchats me, and he tells me all about his family. <laughs> I've even been on a video chat with his kids. Which is, <laughs> uh, like, he, like, he, like, videos me, and then he just puts his kids on, which is terrifying, because they're like eight, and I'm just fucking with the guy. And... Then he starts venting to me about his problems. He's, he says, like, like he's got, like, major problems with, like, maybe his wife or his ex-wife. I don't know him. I've never even watched Making a Murderer, so I don't even know his brother. <laughs> and so I now have this, like, really, like, interpersonal friendship with him. One time I did like, to his Snapchat <laughs> for, like, a week, and he sent me, like, a, like a really depressive message. Oh, and no! Like, oh, this, like, symbiotic relationship. He's simping for him. He just, just fucking just texts me, and it's all your fault. And I, I don't... I don't know what to do. <laughs> so you're stuck with him yeah, now. <laughs> my relationship with Brad Dassey. I'll uh, I'll call and give updates if anything changes. I might make the reach out and go see if I can get dinner with him sometime. Uh, maybe we can do a a 2020 or depending on the status of the coronavirus, 2020 fucking five. By the time we get out of quarantine, version of I'm coming home. Uh, put some new backing tracks behind it. Maybe even do a, like a live acoustic version. Maybe kiss. <laughs> Maybe kiss. Uh, I, I, lost... I would. I would kiss Robert if I had the chance. Uh, I. I think the chance will be given when we m make the 2020 version of "I'm Coming Home" the music video. I, I think my fan-made music video needs to be mashed up with the actual man himself, and you and Brad need to drive through a Burger King drive-through while the song plays, <laughs> like in our original music video back yeah, in the day. That'd be fun. But a, a few points for Robert. He says he doesn't know what to do. And uh, listen, listen. If you see a stray dog and you start giving that stray dog like fucking steak and meat and all the things at once, that dog is yours now. You're now the owner. I don't care if it's a stray dog that lives on the street. It's not in your house. If you're feeding it and it's coming to you for food and you keep fucking feeding it, 
you own that dog now. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> it's you gotta wait for him to die. You could you could take him up to a, a farm upstate, and uh, he can go run in the hills. Or I don't I don't know what you're gonna do. But. There's always a there's always a block button on Snapchat. So, well, yeah. I mean, you can always put your dog down, but it, it's cruel and unusual, Biggs. Most people try not to do that. They try to let their their little pupper live a happy life. Oh, yeah. But yeah, Wisconsin is not too far away. I could easily see Biggs and I uh, road tripping over there, maybe after the apocalypse and hanging out with Brad. I or mean, during the apocalypse. It's not like Brad Dassey and I are unfamiliar with each other. He he had my home address when I was living with my parents when I was in high school, and he sent my family a Christmas card for years, <laughs> bundled with uh, a, a, a CD of his own music. Oh my god! And uh, my par- That's awesome. parents were not fans of the music. Why not? <laughs> not not their cup of tea. Uh, I mean, to be fair, like the first time you were showing me Arion, your dad's like, "Why do you listen to this gay stuff?" Oh, uh, he still thinks it's gay. Uh, my dad thinks so everything I do is gay. His, his I showed him. I showed him that porno we made. He said it was gay. He said the way I sucked your dick was gay. Like, could you imagine somebody's... You're lucky you don't have a dad. Dads are so judgmental. Calling you gay. Observing the things you do. You should be so blessed that your father abandoned you and doesn't love you. (laughs) That sounded like wings. (laughs) The cry. Uh, Speaking of uh, what, what I was just saying, before we go to the next voicemail, Biggs, I want to introduce a new segment. Oh my god, we have so many segments. That's that's how a podcast works. Oh, okay. You have you come up with like 50 good segments and then each episode you do like 3 of you them. You just regurgitate them. Well, oh yeah, you cycle through sometimes, you know. Here's a new segment. It's called Audience Armchair Psychology. Oh boy. <laughs> my my new favorite type of comment is when somebody unironically tries to psychologically uh, diagnose you and I. And uh, I guess I haven't seen those. Uh, when when a fourteen year old sitting at home who doesn't have maybe they their irony and sarcasm detectors don't work very well in their brains, and they think I I, I could probably be a therapist. I'm gonna I'm gonna psychologically uh, analyze these <laughs> analyze YouTubers. These. Yeah, but based on what they upload as a Let's Play show or a podcast. So this is not even a comment from the last podcast this is a comment that was posted yesterday on episode 16 of pokemon blaze black <laughs> so he's me- he's diagnosing us psychologically from something i think we posted four or five months ago okay you ready to hear this yeah i don't even remember what we I'm, were talking I'm, about in the in the episode i'm prepared to find out what's wrong with me finally oh uh, i think you're gonna like this especially biggs and i i encourage more 14 year old brain dead retards to post similar things because this is hilarious this this needs to be an honor ongoing segment so keep posting okay Okay. here's from lol lul the more i watch biggs's interactions with monkey the more i realize how mean monkey is to biggs for seemingly no reason somebody realizes (laughs) whenever i hear monkey make fun of biggs's paralysis Go on. <laughs> Clearly he's never seen a video of you standing. <laughs> These are the people who think they know so much about us they could fucking write our life story to us in a YouTube comment. This guy thinks you're in a wheelchair. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, whenever I hear Mumkey make fun of Biggs' paralysis, parentheses, not even laughing at it himself. <laughs> Uh, or make another joke about how Biggs has no friends. <laughs> yeah, joke. I question, I always question why Biggs stays, considering most of Monkey's jokes don't make him laugh. Well, that's also true. <laughs> and Biggs most likely still has his supportive family to welcome him home. <laughs> Does he think you live with me? <laughs> That, that's the first segment of uh, 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 what audience armchair psychology. What supportive family at home? <laughs> <laughs> what is he drawing all of these conclusions from? From that one episode of Pokemon? Because I don't remember what we were talking about. I have no Clearly idea. Clearly I made a joke alluding to you being in a wheelchair, and neither of us laughed because the joke is we're pretending it's real. That's why we <laughs> didn't laugh at that joke. 
Oh man. So, uh, so I mean, it's brilliant. It's it. I think it's a great segment. I hope. But the sad thing is, we'll never have one like that because now everybody knows to do it ironically. But, yeah. But still, there's a lot of comedy yet to be had, even if people are self-aware. Yeah. I think uh, when anybody tries to like dissect videos without using any context, they just like. I'm going to pinpoint this one thing and dissect it and then try and like evaluate you over. I think it's always funny. It always turns oh, out bad because it's like, yeah, if you were to watch literally two minutes after the part you're talking about, it disproves what you're talking. <laughs> what are you talking about? It It's it, it's really more of an Internet phenomenon and specifically on social media platforms that are heavily used by children. And it's so it's. I don't know, man. Mm. When you realize that most of the shit you see online was written by somebody who's 13, it's really hard to ever care or take the internet seriously ever again. Yeah. Because if a 13-year-old kid came up to you in person, a stranger on the street, and started saying that kind of shit to you, there's no way you would give a shit. There's no way you would care. So why, why allow the internet to bother anybody right if you've ever been cyber bullied realize it's a 13 year old <laughs> S stop giving a shit dude it, but literally it, it hurts my feelings while i'm playing call of duty and mm -hmm. they say that they had sex with my mom <laughs> well i mean you walk what in, if he did you've literally walked in on me having sex with your mom and you just started masturbating so i don't know why that would hurt your feelings but we're brothers <laughs> Brother, my <laughs> so, brother, I walked in on tell you. me what are we fucking for? Ah, oh, mom is such a whore. I'm glad tell this me is why. Not... Siblings day is over. Brother, <laughs> my brother. Yesterday. Hey, you want to hear another voicemail? Yeah. This one is, uh, I, I don't remember what this one is. It's from Heartsy Protsy. Is that the same guy? Yeah. Same guy from the last voicemail? Yeah. Why is he sending it from two different accounts? No, it, not not that one. Oh, okay. Hartsey's the one that you said sound like the other dude. Oh, he's the one who sounded like the retard? Or, I mean, like the crip? <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Hello, monkey. Ah, yep. <laughs> it sure is him. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, if you don't remember, last episode, uh, I roasted this guy because his voice kind of makes him sound like he's crippled. Turns out he's just a normal person. He, uh, it's okay to make fun of him. He does not have a physical disability. It's just how he sounds. It's what I've learned. His message sounds so sad. It's all lowercase, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back for more abuse. Hello, Biggs. I was caught by surprise today when I <laughs> logged into the Biggs Biggsington Discord server and got a message from a fellow member that Monkey Jones called me a subhuman <laughs> on the latest podcast episode. True. Now, I thought there's no way. There's no way. Then I watched it. Yeah, way. It happened. <laughs> and I know why. It's because of my voice. Yeah. And I will be the first person to admit my voice is really retarded. <laughs> it is really bad. Wow. But I find that funny. I find my own voice funny. And I make fun of my own voice all the time. That's good. So when I saw Monkey Jones doing it, a YouTuber that I've been looking up to for a very long time, it, shouldn't it made that. me happy. Oh. I know that's weird to say, yeah, still being happy that a uh, big YouTuber made fun of you, but I am. Thank you. Okay. Really, thank you. Okay. And I also want to apologize for the distasteful Holocaust joke I made. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't funny, and I shouldn't have made it. That was pretty and funny. I'm sorry. That was the best part of the voice. Uh, thank mail. you for playing my voicemail. At least it wasn't the worst that you had in that day. True. The Joker one was pretty bad. True. <laughs> uh, I actually know who did that one. Uh, shout out to Lewis McLean. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Uh, thank you for, for shout this. Shout out to Liquid really, Richard. Really, thank you. I swear to God, we have said multiple times, keep the voicemail short. We've had two of them in a row that were two minutes long. At least the last one deserved to be two minutes he could have made these points in about 30 seconds i think he's got to say thank you a few more times let's listen oh well, i already clicked don't worry we, we have more from that guy because he also made a youtube video he decided he wanted to start some youtube drama with the monkey and big show but, uh -oh. but before we get to that 
when he mentioned the Biggs Bigsington Discord server, that reminded me. Uh, we have an, another uh, comment that was not posted on uh, our last uh, podcast episode, Biggs. I want to read some comments from Twitter. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Biggs, do you want to just give a brief explanation? A- as the owner of the Biggs Bigsington Discord server, what is it? Because I don't go in there, and for good reason. Um, it started out as a Donnie Darko viewing party server. Okay. And after we watched it a couple times, I decided, you know, maybe it'll just be fun. Just have a normal server that people can get on and talk. So basically all it is now is just people going in there in the main chat and just talking about whatever. Um, Do they at least they, talk about our videos? Yeah, like... They'll talk about, oh, they didn't upload some... Oh, so they just go to complain? <laughs> well, that... <laughs> they don't even well, they, they, then, then when they do come out, then they all talk about the videos. But then, like, um, my my main admin, uh, Modernized Psycho, she's added a bunch to it, and I think it's made it pretty fun. There's, like, an art corner where they post, like, fan art and other art that they work on, and then there's other stuff. So it's, it's really just, like, a hangout place, I guess. Okay, well, uh, Twitter disagrees. <laughs> I posted a tweet that said Stanford Prison Experiment, but it's a Discord server, and instead of prison guards, it's fifteen-year-old moderators. This guy named uh, Reed White. You, he's, you know who that is? He's an admin. Okay, he replied. <laughs> I literally see no difference to this in the Biggs Bigsington Discord server. I've been admin for three to four months, and I want out, but the fourteen-year-olds won't let me. And then this guy named uh, Bedos P said, "This is the most pathetic tweet I have ever read." <laughs> The uh, the fourteen year olds have uh, risen against Reed, and they just <laughs> they just make For fun real? of him all the time. Why? <laughs> it's just it's all it's all good hearted. Yeah, but humor. like what? Why? Why is there an army of fourteen year olds harassing <laughs> your moderator? What happened? They call him like Sweaty Reed and Cuck Reed. <laughs> wow, it's all in good fun though. Uh, yes, it sounds like everybody should join the Discord and make fun of this guy. Uh, it, it's great, and uh, Reed he's a good sport about it. Um, yeah, he's a great oh, guy. Clearly, I mean, he's, he's posting about it on Twitter instead of running away from the internet, kicking and screaming as he probably should. <laughs> what was the... Uh, I wanted to watch the video that uh, that funny voice guy sent in. What, what was the... Uh, he might have sent it to me on Twitter. He should have emailed it to us. Yeah, I don't see a video, wow. but it would be from Heartsy. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll go find it on Twitter. Give me one second. Okay, I, I tried to find his video, but I guess he didn't want me to see it because he didn't send it very well because I can't find it. <laughs> uh, I can't find it in our oh, wait. inbox. It's not this one, is it? I doubt it. It's a YouTube link. That's not YouTube. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Hartsy, if you want us to watch your video or if you want to send in another voicemail, do it properly this time so I don't have to search through my fucking Twitter like a retard and not find it. Uh, you want to hear uh, President Donald Trump called in? Yeah. I thought he was busy doing, like, COVID-19 shit and press conferences and golfing, but I <clears throat> I guess he listens to our show. Yeah, I think this is a little bit more important anyways. Well, it says right here, leaked Donald Trump message. This is the real Donald Trump, no joke, sent from my iPhone. Okay, so that's promising. I think that might be Trump. Let's see. Hello, 14-year-old American. I'm oh, sorry, I meant to say, hello, fellow Americans. I think this is actually him. I am him. Mr. Donald J. Trump. Here, this, this sounds just like in, him, right? in the press conference to talk about where the source of the, of the virus is. Oh, shit. <clears throat> so, a lot of people say that it is in China. But for a fact, actually. That's I, how I Trump know. says China. Um, it is actually yeah. from Mexico. Yes, yes. Mexico. Great people. Yes, love them. Oh, uh, yeah. Mexico, where... Where actually, you guys might know, but from from the Monkey and Big Show and the critically acclaimed YouTuber Monkey Jones, um, Biggs, f- fucking fattest. Uh, um, what the yeah, fuck, Trump? Yeah, Biggs was actually Trump. patient. Trump, he zero. voted for you. Oh, yeah, he contracted <laughs> it while eating uh, some fish. Yeah, I don't even Biden. know why, why the fish got the virus, but I don't know. Probably All right, sucked. Trump, that's enough. You know, I know, I know Trump likes to ramble on and on with his metaphors that don't make any sense, but even I can only stand so much. The president himself might be listening to my show and calling in, but I can't listen to that full message. It was just, it's too long. 
Yeah, it's almost like we said keep these like 30 seconds. It, Trump should really stick to the script. I think when he goes off script, he, he likes to ramble and it just gets annoying. I don't think he's ever stayed on script, even on like his television st shows. <sighs> well, so it sounds like you started COVID-19. You were the coronavirus patient number one. Uh, it's patient zero. Okay. Is that true? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> wow. Have you and Trump met? It sounds like you guys know each other from how he was talking about Um, you. Well, uh, I'm actually his kid. Yeah, it makes sense. My runaway dad is actually Donald Trump. That, that's why he would hate Mexicans so much, I understand yeah. now. If, if he, <laughs> that's why I resent my own my own race. I mean, that's probably why the rest of your family I'm hates Mexicans. I'm basically Mexican Hitler. Yeah, that's fair. It's fair. Hey, Big, speaking of, uh, you know, the world's been having some bat problems, but here at home, I've been having some cat problems, Woo! people. Oh, it's Monkey Man. Back to your regularly scheduled um, two gay men talking about their cats segment of the show. Biggs, I got to tell you, what is our issue today? We didn't do a podcast last week, so I've had that line ready to go for two full weeks. The world might be having some bat problems, but we've been having some cat problems. I've, that's a joke I thought for two weeks. Oh, that's so good. I have to say that. And now you finally said I, it. It's finally out there. I feel so free. Good job. Uh, What's no, our cat problem? No, here? no, there's none. I just wanted to make the joke. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, no, there's really a bit. Biggs. As a man who has neither any kids nor pets, I imagine you consider yourself an expert on raising both. Is yeah. that true? Yeah, yeah that's okay. pretty true. I'm normally like one of the main posters on like the mom groups on Facebook. <laughs> I like, bet. I'm obviously the most knowledgeable when it comes to raising children. Yeah. No, you would know better than somebody who has kids. Yeah. And that's why I'm turning to you for this. Do you think there is any, uh, I'm going to make up a word here, poignancy. Is that a real word? Point, sure. Poignancy? I'm, okay. prob I'm using it in my own context. To the uh, uh, axiom, the expression, the, the thought concept, the process, the brain creation. Uh, what are some other words I can use uh, as synonyms for thoughts, Biggs? You could just say thoughts and move on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Do you believe it's true? That if somebody wants to have a kid, they should first have pets to see if they're responsible enough to take care of another living creature. Do you, um, think, do you think they're comparable at all? Because some people no, think they are and some people think they're not. I think they're not at all. You don't think so? No, because in, like the same people that say that are like, oh, well, you should just you know grow a plant. And if you kill the plant, <laughs> you shouldn't have kids. It's just a stupid, stupid uh, thing to, I don't know, to like... Mm -hmm. why am I blanking on this word but yeah I don't know compare it's a stupid yeah. thing to compare to because like cats as long as you feed them they can literally take care of themselves <laughs> like you don't even have to even acknowledge their existence just put food and water down okay. and that's it Okay. a dog open the door and it'll run out and you're fine like mm -hmm. kids are completely different Okay. like that okay. thing is completely immobile when it's born okay, it okay. can't do anything for itself it's not like a kitten where it can at least eat by itself. You have to feed it. So, so Biggs, I, I, I think Biggs, oh, I'm going to add something to the pathetic list right now. Okay, okay. Pet owners that call their pets like fur babies and try to equate <laughs> that to actual kids. Mm -hmm. That is pathetic. Yeah, that's fair. I, I want to say I agree with all the points you're making, but I think we use the same knowledge, the same talking points to arrive to opposite conclusions. I agree that, of course, raising an animal is much, much easier than raising a baby, but that's why somebody should have to prove that they're responsible enough to take care of the easy thing before they take care of the hard one. <laughs> is If you can't handle taking care of a cat, of course you shouldn't have a baby. But, okay. That's why you but have the where, test. This is where we come to our original idea from years ago. Going along with what Arhin said, we have to have a parental procreation permit. Right. You have to take a test to prove that. I thought you would be on board with this because you are you unironically believe in a government mandated parental procreation permit where people have to take a test to prove they're responsible enough to have kids in order to have kids. So why couldn't the test be, hey, 
live with two cats. These cats are going to wake you up every morning crying for food even though they have it. They're going to literally shit and piss in your bed. I'm naming things that have been happening to me, mind you. They're going to do they're going to destroy the things you love. If you have a nice couch, they're going to claw the shit out of it. You can try to stop them. Guess what? You're not always going to be on the fucking couch. If you're in the other room, they're clawing the, that, the couch to shreds. <gasps> My point is, mm. if you can live with something that is only there to terrorize you, something that will shit and piss all over your house and on you, something that you will have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on to keep it alive, Something that will resent you and be angry at you and you have to literally clean out its shit. It's not enough that it shits on you. You have to clean its shit or else it will not go somewhere else. If you can handle all of that and still unconditionally love the annoying little monster just because it's cute, I, I think that's a very worthwhile test for if somebody is capable of having a child. I mean... Yeah, I, it's I not get. it's not equatable as in they're as difficult. I'm saying this is a stepping stone. If you can't even handle this first step, you should not be skipping ahead to the top of the child's staircase. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. But I don't know. OK, so I, I'm going to stick with what I put on the pathetic. Yeah, yeah let, let's have an ideological battle. It's way more but, interesting. But I, I do agree with what you're saying. But at the same time. The people that are like, you know, these pets are my children. <laughs> it's equally as hard. Those people are still pathetic. I agree. I agree. Because they're but, equating an actual human yes, child to an animal. Yes. Okay. That's so not the same. That'll for stay me. the same on. But yeah, I guess that makes sense what you're saying. Yeah. So. Do you want to do you want to expand a little bit more on why you are pro uh, parental procreation permit? And I think that's the name of the episode because it's a lot of P's, a lot of alliteration. I think. There's just so many people that literally do not deserve to procreate ever. <laughs> so many people for so many reasons. I mean, there's obviously the easy targets like drug addicts that just have crazy sex all the time and pop out kids that are just <laughs> suffering for yeah. their entire lives. But then there's also just people that are so stupid <laughs> that should not be procreating ever. Like, how are you so dumb? And then you're going to raise a child? That now, is now, horrifying. But now, Biggs, and I, I already know how you're going to respond to this. I know this is not a problem specifically for you. But somebody who wants to argue uh, a counter-argument might say, But Biggs, if this parental procreation permit was real, then you never would have been born. Now, I know that sounds like you're, uh, it's proving your point because you're like, Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm here to suffer. I shouldn't exist. Exactly. But other people have... A little bit more empathy for their fellow man. How, how would you respond to those people? Having empathy is ridiculous. <laughs> what is it? Okay, Biggs, uh, here's a dictionary.com question. What's the difference between empathy and sympathy? Go. Uh, uh -oh. Isn't empathy feeling the pain for someone else? And like sympathy. It's, it's the ability, I think, to put yourself in somebody else's yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And sympathy is just like, you know, feeling sorry for sorry somebody. For yeah. Someone. Sympathy is like pity. Empathy is like pretending to put your brain inside their yeah, body. It's, it's a lot deeper and a lot more intelligent. And you're saying it's for it's worthless and shitty, right? It's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> fuck. You should, you should obviously try and help those people, but don't force yourself into that situation and make yourself feel terrible. Because you, you should pity them so much that you want to create a law that says they should not have ever existed. Yes. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I'm on board. Like, obviously, if people are going through stuff, help them. But it's like the analogy of someone drowning. If you try to help someone drowning, they start pulling you under two. That is... <laughs> Not right at all. You should not allow that to happen. Just let them go. Let them drown. You tried what you could. <sighs> yeah. You know, it's... Once we start turning it into metaphors of uh, trying to save a drowning person and then they try to pull you under, it's like, oh, well, how well is that metaphor going to work for every situation in life? If somebody is, like, super depressed and sad, should we avoid helping them because then we'll just get sad when we hear about their problems? No, that's why you sympathize with them and try to give them advice. But you don't try to save them from drowning. You're like, just, you're like hey, try to kick. Try to swim towards shore. <laughs> it's it's okay if you're drowning. Just I, I can't come physically help you. <laughs> That, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, fuck, I don't want to drown.
Yeah. I don't want to feel sad. Fuck it. Uh, Try like, to have happier thoughts and had, you'll probably be okay. I've had too many friends fall victim to trying to empathize with me and it's done <laughs> nothing but hurt them. Oh, God. What? What happened? Just tons of terrible stuff. And it's like... what They try to empathize with you. Like what? They like, okay, I have to know what it's like to eat 5,000 calories a day and they just start eating and you're like, <laughs> you shouldn't have empathized with me, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Look what happened. Yep. Cobb blew the fuck up. It, our old buddy Dakota, man, how are all of our old skinny friends getting so fat? They really did empathize with you too much. You're the last one that needs to get fat and then I can oh, finally get skinny. Have you been reading my Twitter comments? They're saying I am getting fat now. I, I weigh 150 pounds for the first time in my life, Biggs. Uh -oh. They're saying that I'm looking fat. <laughs> They're trying to make me. Monkey a thick boy. What world do we live in where a guy who weighs 150 they're like, oh, that guy should lose some weight. But how how are f actual fat people supposed to feel when a skinny guy is told to lose weight? How inhumane, Biggs? Do they do you deserve? I'm going to tell you a little story of okay. when I went to my doctor's office. Okay. <clears throat> I was in there. I don't even remember why I was in there. It was like a checkup or something. And I'm sitting on the the bed thing, waiting for him to come in. And I look up and there's a poster on the wall of body BMIs and they were labeled. Okay. The one I <laughs> fell under was literally labeled grotesque, morbidly obese. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I've been saying for years that you're grotesque, so I'm glad been, it's scientifically, medically proven. I'm just proven. looking at the sign as the doctor walks in. And he like looks at me and looks at the sign and he's just like, we, we have to put those up and i'm like yeah okay you well, have to and stories like that are unironically where <laughs> the body positivity movement comes from because people who are in your situation but have a lesser mind people who are in your situation but have less self-awareness less self-control those people see a sign like that and think the sign is the problem the no. sign is what needs to go i'm beautiful and healthy at any size i think you are like that sign is fucking hilarious because it hurt my feelings, but it <laughs> that should sign be was up. a slap in the face, and it's right. definitely like you need to change. Yeah, the sign isn't the problem, as Bill Ingvall might say. Here's your sign. Is that Bill Ingvall? <laughs> it's there's your sign. No, it's here's your sign. It's there's your sign. Okay, Alexa, what is Bill Ingvall's catchphrase? Hmm. I don't know that. Yeah, me neither. It's there's your sign. Okay, Google. <laughs> okay, Google. It's going to try and disprove me. Okay, Google! You fucking useless... You have to unlock your phone. Coward. It's a coward. Unlock your phone. Cowardly. Okay, Google. Oh, that, that got mine. Bill Ingvall catchphrase. And it's loading... Sure, asking Google Play Music to play Bill Engvall catchphrase. Okay. Is that a song? Sorry, oh, something went yeah. wrong. Turns out that's Please not a song. Just, Google just go to Google and Google it. <laughs> here's your sign. Oh my, look at all those results. That's, I said it's here's, you said there's. You're the one I who's did? wrong. <laughs> yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you about myself. I'm originally from the state of Texas. I love being from Texas. Just get to the good yeah. part. Oh my god, get to the good part. Why is this a seven minute video? Here's your sign Christmas. I'm pretty sure I'm the one who said here. here you, you probably did, I'm yeah. just retarded. This is, uh, this just, is unwatchable. Just, just stop. <laughs> just stop. There's a southern comedian named Bill Ingvall and he has a catchphrase. That's all you need to know. YouTube did not want to give us an easy clip. <laughs> YouTube did not want to help at all. Well, Biggs. What should if people want to call in and leave voicemails about this uh, this parental procreation permit slash uh, cat baby debacle? What you know? What what sort of talking points are you shooting for here? Well, first off, I think you should listen to parental procreation permit Good by Arhin Arian Lucasen. Yeah. Um, because that really hits all the points. But yeah, mainly... you, you should listen to the song while reading the <clears throat> lyrics, and then you'll understand where Biggs is coming from. Because Biggs agrees with the song. Yeah. I, I assume. We could just, no, no, no. People can look it up. I don't need yeah. to pull it up. 
So I don't know. There's just way too many people that just don't deserve to have children. And I feel like yeah, there should be something done about it. Well, speaking of uh, being responsible and, and getting things done, you know all those cat problems I was talking about? Yeah. Working on fixing them. You know what I did? I, I figured out, because it, it's a very strange issue, when you wake up and you find that your cat has either pissed or shit on your bed. It's uh, while you're in it. Well, no, not usually when I'm in it. It's like I'll walk into the room and find it. But oh. Yeah. I'll, I'll wake up on the couch, walk into my bedroom, and find that the cat literally took a hot, wet, fat shit on my comforter. And, of course, uh, the first time I was enraged and mad, and I was like, Why? Why? <laughs> Why, cat? Why? You have two litter boxes. I clean them out every fucking day. Why? <laughs> but now I'm, I'm starting to understand. Maybe, maybe just maybe. And th this was from the new cat from uh, Isabel, the eight-year-old uh, female. You would expect her to know better, but I think it's not because she's a dickhead bitch. It's because Blaze is fucking disgusting. Could you imagine if you were moved into a new place to live and you were stuck with a roommate who was just a, like an annoying little kid? They now love each other. They've learned. I, I've seen them. They'll like they'll start cat fighting. Then they'll both immediately stop and start licking each other, which is a a very good sign that cats like each other if they're licking each other. But then they'll start fighting again. So I, I assume they're just playing and that they like each other. But imagine if you get a new roommate. And it's some disgusting little brat. And you're told, hey, whenever you have to shit or piss, you have to crawl on top of your roommate's shit and piss. And do it on top of theirs while, like, sitting in it. Would you want to use that litter box or would you go shit on somebody's bed to get their attention? <laughs> Probably get someone's attention. Yeah. Now, th of <clears throat> course, there's not much I can do about it. There are two litter boxes. You would think the cats would be smart enough to, you know, get, give each other one. That's not how it works. That's not how it fucking works. It's never going to work that way. Cats do whatever they want. You can't teach them. You can't train them. They don't care. So if I'm asleep, which I, I tend to do seven or eight hours a day, I don't know about you, Biggs. When I'm asleep, sometimes Blaze goes and takes a fat shit in his litter box. And then it's still in there when Isabel goes in there and she doesn't want to smell that shit. So she goes and poops in my bed. <laughs> what, what's a boy supposed to do? Answer. Automatic self-cleaning litter box. Yeah, you built a robot to do it, right? I literally, I, I grabbed a bunch of gears and gadgets and gizmos and wires and electricity and light bulbs. Combined them together with a litter box. Long story short, I, I, I got... And people know that I like to be extravagant when I'm buying things for my cats. I have a whole video about buying the most expensive robotic automatic cat toy. Uh, I bought the most expensive uh, cat tree at Petco. When it comes to buying an automatic litter box, uh, you know, every man has his, uh, limits. <laughs> has his limits. The most expensive one was also like a cool robot. But it was like six hundred fucking dollars. Oh. <laughs> I said, as much as I hate getting shit in my bed, I it's not worth six hundred dollars. <laughs> so I'll take uh, one of the automatic litter boxes that are around the one hundred dollar mark, much more reasonable. And now every time a cat shits or pisses, these uh, little rakes just go through it and push all of it into a compartment, and I, I clean it out like once a week, once every two weeks. So much better than waking up with the piss and shit in my bed. It's never happened again ever since I got the new one. Both the cats seem to like it, and it's much uh, more clean, and that room doesn't smell like cat shit all the time. It's yeah. perfect. Good deal. I'm not even going to say the name of the brand because I don't want you to think it's like a sponsorship deal. I'm just saying if your cat is shitting in your bed, if you've got a spare hundred dollars, go hit up Amazon. and. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. If you can afford it, that's such a, a good like little hack. Quote unquote. Life hack. Hack. Yeah. Because then it's like you don't have to worry about cleaning it every single day. I mean, yeah, you'd still want to clean it often, but and it's not like a priority for your cat to not poop everywhere. Especially when you, you have two cats and they're so dumb that they just use the same litter box and ignore the second one for no reason. So that thing gets chock full of piss and shit within an hour. With the way these disgusting mongrels are eating oh oh my god they're shitting so much you it's should, everywhere you should tell them about uh 
Blaze pulling out the treats earlier and then Isabel breaking into them. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just uh, I had a box of uh, their little cat treats on the counter and one of the cats pushed it off and then all the treats spilled out on the floor. And I'm like, <laughs> no, because they're going to start eating them all. We're literally watching TV and all of a sudden we both hear like a bang and he looks over and <laughs> literally screeches, no, and he like jumps <laughs> off the couch and sprints over there. When I Usually I give them like four or five treats each. So when the floor is covered in 50 treats and both the cats are running towards it, it's like, ah, oh, fuck. Here we go. <laughs> He's just frantically Off to the races. <laughs> All oh. right, Biggs, you want to hear some more voicemails? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what, uh, oh, okay. We got this guy named Sammy J who sent in like a hundred of them. Did I mark any of them as being good? Looks like, uh, looks like I didn't. <laughs> And there's one up there. Uh, from from Sammy? No, right there. No, I want to listen to the Sammy one. This guy named Sammy sent in six voicemails, and I don't know which one to listen to because I'm not going to listen to all of them. Just do the excited one. That sounds good. This one's called My Mother-in-Law. That one's called You Bombed Your School. This is an actual question. That's what we asked for. But I kind of want to listen to the mother-in-law one because I assume it's about Rice Krispies. <laughs> okay. I mean... <laughs> Maybe if this one's good, we'll listen to another one. He has to earn Just it. Just end up listening to all of them? Fuck no. I don't think I have the time for that. No more monkey. His channel got deleted. This sounds like the crypt. The state of the YouTube podcast is now stopped. Now Susan needs her own content cop. Okay. Was that worth our time, Biggs? You like that? Are you, are you glad you had to listen to the one that was called My Mother-in-Law? Are you glad that you made us listen to that? Just click on I have an actual question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was born in 2001. He's a post-9-11 human. I assume. Hey, uh, Monkey, I just wanted to uh, tell you that uh, on December 30th, I DM'd you on Instagram saying that there were no more Rice Krispies. <laughs> yeah. And you answered back, fuck you. <laughs> uh, Going to be honest, I cried for a week after that. Good, fuck you. But, uh, that's not the point. After uh, after I sent you that, after you answered, I uh, I sent you a YouTube video. And it was a, it was a Monkey Jones Friends theme that I made on YouTube. And I was just wondering if you, uh, if you watched it and what did you think of it? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I do vaguely recall watching something like that. Uh, so it probably was the one that you sent me, and it was probably pretty good. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. I, I watch most of the, like the fan made <clears throat> stuff that people send me, but I just don't respond to it all. Maybe I should start responding more. They'd probably appreciate that. Do you think if I took the three extra seconds out of my day to respond to people, it would maybe like brighten up? Um, it, it would literally it would, make their month. It would make mean more to them uh, than it possibly ever could to me since I care so little. Yeah, I mean, I would feel the wow. same way if you replied to some of my messages. Uh, like sometimes man, I'll, Listen, man, I'm watching one piece. I'll I don't have time to answer. You, and it's like... I get no reply, and then you'll send me a link to some stupid <laughs> shit. And I'm just like, I literally asked you something, and you just ignored yeah, it. You'll ask me a question, I won't answer, and two days later, I'll send you a link to like some fucking like meme music video. Just like, why? And then I'm mad at you when you don't answer that it was funny. <laughs> yeah. So if, if any fans out there, if you're getting discouraged because I'm ignoring your messages, I don't even reply to fucking bigs. There's times where I'll call you, won't even answer. I have to like show up in his house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy, dude. <laughs> the thing is, I always have my phone on me, and I always see these messages. I just don't have the time to mentally facilitate answering them. It's too much effort. I have to read oh, subtitles. Oh, but if I was some now. girl sending you boobs, I only respond to one of those these days. Okay, if if I'm just gonna take e your even phone. if new girls did it, I wouldn't answer them either. I'm, gonna, I'm a one Snapchat titty man these I'm days. I'm gonna take your phone and change my name to her name, okay. and then I'm gonna send you pictures of boobs so okay. you message me back finally. I've, I've seen what your boobs look like, and I would reply to them very quickly. Fantastic! <laughs> I would definitely be encouraged to continue. Uh, Universe, some wanted to say something. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, Monkey, I just wanted to uh, 
you know, long time listener, first time caller, but uh, I just wanted to send a message to the show uh, about the coronavirus. This is bullshit. It's totally fucking, it's not totally fucking fake, but it's blown out of proportion. Uh, like coronavirus has like been around for years and years and years, like almost 10% of uh, flu uh, flus are caused by coronaviruses. And this year's death toll is like nothing. It's not even going to do this big as the 2018 one. The 2018 one had like 80,000 deaths in the U S and this ain't going to go anywhere near this. So basically, I mean like human society is just fucked from this point on out because there's always going to be another strain of COVID or something else that's going to come up and people will panic hysterically and everything will get shut down. The borders will get shut down. Flights will get shut down. Restaurants, cafes, bars, everything. You won't be able to leave your house. People just grow more insane, more isolated. The economy is going to be ruined. I don't just mean like stocks and stuff. I mean fucking everything will just be ruined. Like you won't be able to get food. You won't be able to pay the rent. You guys like turn tricks to survive or something. I don't fucking know. It's crazy. It's always going to collapse. The happening is happening. So, yeah. That's some uh, that's some heavy shit, Biggs. I got to ask you, you know, uh, a- as a man who is not educated in politics or medical science or history, uh, what is your opinion on uh, everything that's going on? I'm sure it's really valuable and everybody needs to hear every single person's thoughts. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I'm, to me, to me, I'm, I'm not shitting on this guy at all. I think this guy is probably he probably is right. Knows what he's talking about. I have a, a Twitter timeline that is having an absolute civil war with itself. Half the people I follow are, are like, "Yeah, stay home. Oh, we all need to be quarantined, isolation." And then half are like libertarian people saying, "The government is overstepping. I should be free to go do whatever I want. Who cares if grandma gets sick and dies? Fuck it." Uh, w- on this vast political spectrum of uh, opinions on COVID, where do you think uh, we, as the Monkey and Big Show, should land? I think our brand is tied to our political image, Biggs. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, it's it's a weird time for sure, and I never thought I would live through something like this. But I think the approach I've taken is, like, maybe maybe they're right and maybe it's being blown out of proportion, but why not take the smallest steps to keep myself safe just in case? So I guess I would land somewhere in the middle, but I mean, it, it's smarter to just make sure you're being safe versus not because by chance it does hit you like in our area that the numbers are getting higher and higher every day. So why it, not just does take it, steps is your to area, your... the United States of America, because that's true of the entire fucking country. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm saying like, I think from one week to the next we went from like 20 cases to like 1600 yeah within a week so i mean well and here's the thing uh when it comes to the number of cases those numbers are useless because that's just the number of they're they're, i'm guessing the numbers are way higher because those are just the ones that got tested the ones that yeah exactly there's not that many tests so I don't see why people are like bashing on those who are taking steps to keep themselves safe. I, th- I think it's more of a, a philosophical, political idea of, okay, you can choose to keep yourself safe, but should we all be forced to stay at home and not work and not make money? Is that fair? I mean, I don't know. It's a toss up for me because it's like, yeah, it is kind of crappy and we should be able to do whatever, basically. But at the same time, you know, there's enough idiots out there that are just going to keep gathering and spreading it. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. I, I think it, I don't know really where I would lie on that because it's such a new concept to me that I've never had to think before in my whole life. Well, and you and I are both in unique circumstances where it's not affecting our livelihoods. We both have jobs that we can both still show up for. We both still get paid. Uh all of my odd jobs along with YouTube, I, I'm still making money from all of them. So right. our, our lives, other than not being able to go to a grocery store at midnight like we usually do, I don't think our lives have really changed at all. Yeah, mine so, hasn't really changed at all. So if we practice the useless concept of empathy, as Biggs has, has pointed out, it, if we put ourselves into the shoes of somebody who relies on going to work to pay the bills each month, and now they're being told, hey, you're going to stay at home without getting paid, without working, for months and months on end but with they no are solution. Paid. 
with maybe a $1,200 check coming at the end of the summer. Get fucked right now, though. How, how, do, how are those but people... But they are getting paid. They're on unemployment. Not everybody. The, y- a good portion. Okay, we're, we're doing a, a thought exercise where we empathize with the people who are not in the magical scenario where they're still getting money sent to them. Let, let's think about the actual real-life human Americans who are in the situation I'm discussing right now where they got fired from their job or they're just not allowed to go to work anymore. They're not making any income whatsoever and they have a family and they have bills and all that shit. How are those people supposed to feel about being told, hey, the whole country, the sa- for the sake of the whole country, everybody stay home and your family can suffer? Would they be suffering more if, if he still got to go to work and make money? See, that's that's where I just – I haven't – I don't know how to comprehend situations because, like, we've never <laughs> you been – You really can't empathize with other people's lives at all? I mean – Obviously, I feel for them, but I don't well, know. That's sympathy, though. But can can you can you literally imagine being that person? No. Okay. Wow. Damn. Okay. Maybe at some point, but not anymore. Well, I, and I'm not trying to shit on you either. I think that is something that lots of people actually struggle to do: is imagine like, like having somebody else's perception. All I can do, at least now, is just you know feel bad for them, but. There's nothing I can do to change. I don't even know what kind of change we can make that would benefit everything. Like, there's really nothing. (laughs) Another point that he made that I think is is very true and very scary. Uh, Whenever a major catastrophe happens and our rights get taken away to prevent it from happening again, those rights never come back. Right. Think about how great it was to go to to, uh, the airport. In the 90s, in the 80s, before 9-11, flying was something that people thought was fun. It was enjoyable. It was not super expensive and full of a bunch of hidden fees and garbage. After 9-11, flying is a fucking travesty. If you have to waste an entire day traveling and you're taking a flight, it's going to be the worst day you have that month. It's dog shit. Yeah, especially like... What's the new thing? You have to like have a gold star on your ID. <laughs> yeah, it's by, so fucking annoying. By October, otherwise you have to do like extensive screening at the airport. Yeah, so annoying. yeah. No, I agree with that. That and and, and I, it's so invasive. Don't we? Shouldn't we have the right to travel from one state to another without like X-rays being taken of our penises and shit? You would think. I mean, do the nine out of ten of the tests they do fail and they get the weapons through security anyway yeah but so why are americans still putting up with that shit now think of that that whole concept of 9-11 fucked up airlines and now think about how covid19 is going to fuck up our rights in the future uh no yeah no f- fuck you stay home the government decided you have to stay home if you leave the I house guess, the police will arrest you i guess the way i would prefer it is if they gave like guidelines but they didn't enforce them i guess that would be probably better like not to where they're stripping rights directly but saying hey these are what we think you should be doing to lessen the spread versus like mandating it and i also think because obviously i'm i'm not for stripping rights of any sort at all yeah but uh yeah so i guess for me it would be like putting out guidelines and saying hey this is probably our best case of surviving whatever and that yeah so i agree with that 100 percent. well what's tricky for me is that i i can find myself agreeing with every different viewpoint because yeah. everybody makes good points every well because everybody's talking about what's best for them and it, it's different for everybody because when you think about what's happening on a, a literal level this guy in his voicemail said oh covid's always been around it's not that big of a deal why I think he's wrong in that particular case is because if you think about what is happening on a literal level, maybe COVID-19 isn't that deadly, it isn't that bad, it doesn't matter. The problem is that hospitals are just overrun. There's too many sick people at the same time. Right. Maybe if everybody got COVID but it was spread out over a long time, Maybe he's right. Maybe it's like the flu. Yeah, it's the but, whole. But the problem the is that curve. it's it's a million people doing it at the same time. That's the problem. It's not that it's as deadly as the flu or whatever. Yeah, the fuck. it's it's the whole lessen the curve thing, and that's kind of what I mean by like the guidelines and how to minimize it. Because 
say everyone that's going to get COVID got it this month, then that would be, everybody would die. It would collapse. <laughs> yeah. Like everything would collapse. But if we took steps to keep ourselves safe, you know, and be smart about things, then maybe everyone that gets it, it would stretch out over the next year and a half or something. Then it's not as bad. It, it So, yeah, you do that solution and lots of people don't die from hospitals. But also the downside of that same solution, a lot of people are going to die because of poverty and, and they're going to be in financial straits and families will suffer because they can't go to work. So it's like no matter what you do, people are fucked. Yeah, no exactly. No matter what you do. And that's back to the whole thing of like, I don't know how to comprehend the situation. Yeah, there's, there's no way to fix there's it. There's no set solution it's where fucked. everyone wins. And that's why I'm comp when you compare this to 9-11, in the future, whenever there's any sort of disease the next time there's a swine flu and all these other things we've experienced the hysteria of people of mob mentality and human beings just generally being fucking stupid where every new disease is going to be the next covid for us yeah whether it's deadly or not especially every since... store is going to be sold out people are going to be told to quarantine it's going to be fucking chaos even when there's nothing wrong right because at this point, the government's like, well, we've already done it once. So the next go about, <laughs> they're just going to do it again because we know they'll listen. Yeah. It's just people will accept that their, quote, safety is more important than their, quote, rights. See, and, I don't agree with that. Of, that's my whole point about TSA is that my safe, the level of more safe I am compared to the level of less rights I have is not a good, it's not very level at all. Yeah, that trade-off is never worth it. No. Ever. No. Which is why, you know, a lot of people bash on me. Oh, he's pro-Trump. He's like the Uncle Tom of the Mexicans. <laughs> Nobody unironically makes that. Yeah, yes, they do. Who? I've, I read our comments. I not not from the show. Oh. I have people in real life that okay. are like, I thought you meant dude, YouTube you really need comments. to think about your views because you're, yeah. So, like, I'm a huge advocate of gun rights and stuff. If we were Biggs, ever... Biggs has been playing so much Call of Duty, he told me he's going to buy an MP5 or MP4, which one? No, I'm buying an MP3? AR. You said you're buying an MP3 from iTunes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no. Stupid. Because that, that's one of the huge rights, like, right? Because if we ever gave the that The right up, to defend yourself? Yeah, that's pretty exactly. important. If we ever just let the government take it away for the sake of, oh, well, some people might be safe, which has been proven factually wrong... You know? That would be devastating because then literally we would have no defense against the government. They could do whatever they wanted and it would be awful. Well, and, and I mean, like, I, I right, get, so, I get right now, so upset talking about politics because I can see where everybody is coming from. And yeah. the, the counter argument to what you just said is you really think you owning, what, what gun are you going to buy? Fucking AR-15? AR-15. Do you think if you have an AR-15, you're going to fight the government if they show up with a tank? It doesn't even have to be the government, per se. You know that the, but the government has tanks. You're not going to win. Okay, so if whether we're going to gonna jump into that scenario, then what about like a Red Dawn scenario where we get invaded by well, that's outside what, forces? I, they, they would argue that's what our military is for. Okay, but what if the military can't handle all of it? Because the military can't be everywhere. Yeah. But well, every citizen kind has of the are. right to have a gun. The U.S. military kind of is everywhere. But here's another thing. Like right now during the quarantine, there's been skyrocketing gun sales and Hell yeah. ammo sales. Has there been one mass shooting? No. No. <laughs> no. So why is it somehow weapons being sold the issue? It's not. It's the, the people that get them. Yeah. And every single time it seems like it's somebody that slipped through the cracks and got one that they shouldn't have. That's not on the guns. That's just. No. Yeah. I mean, in, in cases like Elliot Roger, Nicholas Cruz. If they would have done any background check of substance at all, neither one of those guys would have gotten their guns. So, I mean... It's... I mean, it, you know, stuff... I don't know. I just don't think those scenarios should strip all of us because then we're all at risk. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm not even going to make any more points because this is one of those things where I don't have an actual opinion. I can just see where everybody's coming from and I yeah. don't care enough to actually and, think about and it. see, yeah... Basically, every viewpoint I have, like, I see all sides to it. Like, yeah. I always give... You just want to own your fucking gun! I just... Yeah, I, I always want to give the opposite side the the um, satisfaction of telling me why they think they that way. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, at least I understand why they think that way. But yeah. 
But yeah, so I just want my guns because they go boom and it's fun. Well, unironically, you should have the right to have that position. It's like, yeah, I have a right to own a gun and shoot it and have fun with it. And I don't see you shooting anybody who doesn't deserve to be shot, so... Yeah. It's like, I mean, unless somebody's trying to kill you, you probably won't shoot a human. <laughs> probably. Exactly. In my whole life, I will probably never end someone else's life unless they're trying to end mine or my, my the people I care about. Yeah. Yeah, so basically yourself and Blaze, and maybe if she shits on you enough, uh, Isabel. Yeah, and Scorch. I would kill someone for Scorch. Uh, Even though he tries to eat my fingers like worms. Yeah, Scorch has nothing but disdain and hatred for both of us. I don't know why you'd want to protect him. Every time him. I pick him up, he's, like, so mad, but then I'll, like, start scratching under his chin, and he, like, starts smiling. But then, like, as soon as I you, move my finger away, he, like, starts going to bite now, it. Now, when you say smile, do you... Do you think that something with a literal lizard brain is capable of emotions like, oh, he's holding me, this makes me smile? I don't. It, I, I think he's so dumb that it's not even a concept. It sure looks like a smile, okay? That's why I call it a smile. Like <laughs> He's just he, opening his he, mouth. No, like he perks his head up and he like closes his eyes where he's like Alexa, squinting at me. can lizards smile from happiness? Hmm, I don't know that. Why the fuck do you exist? <laughs> what can you do? Alexa, Google, can lizards feel happy? Sorry, I'm not sure. She can't fucking Google! Alexa, Alexa, what is your purpose? I was made to play music, answer questions, and be useful. Apparently uh, not! Uh, uh, you're only doing about 33% of those things lately, Alexa. Shameful. Well, Biggs, I think that was all I had prepared for this week. Did you have any? I think you wanted to briefly uh, introduce another pathetic list about gloves. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess we could throw that at the end. Yeah. Um, so a pathetic entry I have is the people during this quarantine walking around wearing gloves everywhere. Okay? Now, what is the problem with that? Because now, it seems like medically, you know, you wear gloves to prevent getting germs right, and bacteria right. on your person. Here's the issue, though. Those people are walking around, going to gas stations, touching the pumps, touching like the key card or key read or card readers, you know, touching their car. Then they take out their phone and make a phone call <laughs> with the same gloves. Put it up to They're their face. They're just taking these gloves and making them like literal transportation units for all the germs that they touch all day, and they never change the gloves. But what if these are magical gloves that? Uh, bacteria can't exist like on. it would be different if they had gloves on and after they touch something they like spritzed it with like <laughs> bacteria killer but they don't they or, just use the same gloves it, all it, day if they change the gloves every time they touch something else yes like yeah. what what is the point you might as well just be like <laughs> spitting on your hands and sticking them in garbage cans <laughs> and then just rubbing your face like an idiot <laughs> I don't understand it it's so pathetic yeah. if anything you're making your chances of getting sick higher Speaking of getting higher, uh, after the show, let's have some fun. Hey, let's listen to this. Uh, this guy sent in a, a song. Want to hear a song? All right. This will be the song that plays us out. He, he said he recorded a jazzy version of the Price is Right theme. Sounds, okay. Sounds exciting. This is from a different podcast. We only do one take podcast. Hey, we do that too. <laughs> well, I've been editing lately, but let's take a listen. <laughs> It's not the same without a remix of you screaming. Maybe we can take this and overlay it with the other one and just play them both at the same time. We should do that. We'll do it. I'll do it in post. <laughs> hey, everybody. Okay, let's... Uh... Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Monkey and Biggs show yet again. If you want to check out Biggs, go to twitter.com slash Biggs. <laughs> Is that right, Biggs? Uh, I think it's at Biggsington. You know, I think that you can just click it in the description. Yeah, it's in the description. Hey, you want to support the show? Go to patreon.com slash monkey. Make sure you subscribe. 10,000 subscribers strong, folks. Let's go to uh, 10, 100,000 million. 10, 100,000? Let's get so many subs that PewDiePie says, whoa! Bro, if PewDiePie ever says Biggs Biggsington, I will literally... Are you jealous that Be PewDiePie excited. talked about me in his video one time? No, that's uh, fine. I was so excited. 
when he talked about you, I literally texted you. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think so. I was like, bro, he said your name. And I was like, Biggs, that was from a life long forgotten. Please don't contact me. Oh, <laughs> oh no. It's like One my year dad later, I come again. crawling back, folks. Okay, bye. Let's let the song finish.